and the United States Information Service, USIS, for this book, you know, because it's uh, through them that I got it. it uh, so, um, um, Tamla Motown is a black uh, Motown, is a black label, record label, one of the first black record labels in the United States uh, from out of um, Detroit. And um, uh, the founder is very gaudy. He's a young, he was a young black man at that time who borrowed um, $800 to start the label. And it turned out to, to be the label that recorded all the, um, the, the, the black musicians that later became famous uh, from um, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles to the Temptations, the, the Jackson Five, with the Supremes, Diana Ross, Lionel Richie, Gladys Knight and the Pips and all those people. Without Motown, they wouldn't have come up. And Marvin Gaye. And of course, you see that they are just like a, a family, you, um, you know, the way they are. Because Marvin Gaye, for example, was married to um, very Gordy's sister, Anna Gordy. Uh, and uh, Smokey Robinson was married to the sister of one of his singers. And you see all these things. Some of these pictures will show all these things. And of course, uh, that's the cover of the album. But yeah, Motown, how they got that uh, world, you know. You know, Detroit, Michigan is where they are from, and it's a motor town. The, the manufacture of vehicles there uh, is an industrial motor town. And so initially they called it the Motor Town Album, which they later cut down to, uh, cut short to Motown Album. And of course, Smokey Robinson, uh, Barry God himself was a songwriter, and he wrote a lot of famous songs like uh, Money, The Best Things in Life Are Free, but you can keep that for the birds and the bees. Your love gives me a thrill, but your love don't pay my bills, so give me money, or something like He wrote a, that kind of song, you know. And Smokey Robinson was a younger man, and he was also um, a songwriter. And he encouraged Gordy to start this label. And of course, naturally, Smokey Robinson was one of his artists. Smokey Robinson had the miracles. Oh, he was the, they were a great, great group, you know. I, and then, the, but the, the temptations were the greatest, because they could dance, they could sing, and the good thing about them was that um, they sang parts, um, the record that young people will remember them making is probably, that's Marvin Gaye. That's Marvin Gaye, a very young Marvin Gaye, and you can see how that picture is. In fact, uh, some Nigerians don't understand the art of photography. The photographer deliberately cut it like that, because he wanted to emphasize, you see the microphone, and you see the face. He wanted to emphasize that the man is a singer, and that was why he did it, because they would say, oh, why didn't he show the old face? He didn't, uh, he didn't set it very well, and all, but it's a very good photograph, in fact, very artistic. And Marvin Gaye, of course, was also one of the, uh, of the uh, artists, but the Temptations, as I was saying, I think, were really the greatest. Because uh, you know, uh, they could dance, they could sing, and they could do everything. And, the good, and each person had a part. It, one sang bass, one sang uh, tenor, one sang alto, one sang a falsetto alto, um, a treble. Or, uh, you know, and so they were very... Um, and, and the advantage it had for them was that most of these groups after a while, the lead singer will say, oh, he wants to go solo, because that's Stevie Wonder as a 10-year-old. That's Stevie Wonder. He was called Little Stevie Wonder at that time. His uh, real name is Stevie Land Morris, but Barry Gordy named him Stevie Wonder, because he thought it was a wonder he was performing so well at that age. He was called Little Stevie Wonder, but of course, after I got to be six foot tall or something like that, he had to drop the little from it, you know. He, he of course, also is a great performer. He was in Nigeria during Festac. He performed during Festac. And of course, uh, the Temptations, they could do all this, and they were able to, uh, but like um, the Supremes, Diana Ross was their lead singer. So she went solo after a while and said, oh, she, they had to name it after her, Diana Ross and the Supremes. They refused, so she went solo. Or Lionel Richie and the Commodores, he went solo. But the Temptations, after one of them sang the lead in two or three of their records, um, and he said, the, he wanted them to name the group after him, David Ruffin, and the Temptations, they refused. And in fact, it was tough, and he went his own way. Yeah, those are the temptations. Those are the temptations there with the Supremes. Uh, the Supremes, they are performing together in a TV show, and the temptations, believe me, they were the greatest, because they could dance, they could sing, they could do everything. I really admired them, you know. And, uh, you know, and um, uh, of course, after he, he, David Ruffin wanted to go solo, um, and of course, he said he could go, he went, but it was the temptations that survived, because their sound was, um, it's kind of interweaven of the different parts, the, the, the bass, the tenor, and all that. And um, this song, um, My Girl, they sang it so beautifully. Otis Redding made it famous also, but um, Smokey Robinson wrote it. But uh, the Temptations were the first to have a hit with it. And they sang songs like that, and I thought um, they were really fantastic. Of course, there was also Gladys Knight and the Pips.
and um, then the Jackson. Yes, this is Jackson family. That's the father on the left with Janet Jackson sitting on his lap. And that's Michael next to Janet there. That's the mother. And those are the others at the back. You know, I think that's the elder sister called Latoya at the back there. And the other the picture on the other page, we see that the picture on the other page there, you know, we see that was the very first publicity picture of the Jacksons where Michael is a small boy and kneeling down. Uh, I, I'm sure viewers will want to see that, you know, and you will see that, uh, you know, they were very, uh, <laughs> at that time, they were just starting out, you know, so it was just a little bit, um, um, they, they are, no, no, this is the other one, the picture, this is the family, you know, then on the other page, the end of the group, well, we'll, we'll see sometime, anyway, during the show, um, and of course, uh, the, um, the book is very good also, because it states the, um, it writes the lyrics of many of the songs that we know, you know, that we don't really know. It writes all these lyrics like in a poetry form. And um, it's really very interesting uh, seeing all these things. And of course, um, again, um, yeah, these are the Jacksons performing. This was much later. This is a, a, they were probably performing somewhere there, but there are still small boys at that time. And then, of course, um, one of them, Jermaine Jackson, married um, uh, the daughter of Barry Gordy, Hazel. We'll see that picture a bit later. Uh, and uh, you know, and you see that, um, and of course, of course, after he married her, then he decided to stay with uh, the Motown label when the others left. Because after these people, after they, yeah, that's that's very godly. They are kissing his daughter and giving her over to Jermaine Jackson the, as a, a new husband. Of course, the marriage lasted uh, a, a few years, <laughs> but it was a very, and of course, Jermaine Jackson decided to stay with the Gordy label. But unfortunately, he didn't quite succeed. It was the brothers and then Michael who went and succeeded in a big way. But that's a very loyal son-in-law for you, you know. <laughs> and uh, of course, he also recorded um, some uh, white artists. And if, if possible, we may see um, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a, an actor we know in Nigeria here uh, acting in Moonlighting, Bruce Willis. Uh, he also made a record with them. And uh, there's a picture of him somewhere that we're going to see. And you can see that he's a real comedian. And he, he, he recorded all these uh, things. Yeah, that's Bruce Willis there. He, viewers will remember him from Moonlighting. He's a real comedian, you know, and, uh, and you know, he recorded a record, we made a record with Motown, and uh, the record got into the top 10. And that was a very good uh, <laughs> thing, you know. And of course, the book is a very good book, but the only problem is that uh, maybe they didn't use a photo editor. Because maybe they didn't use a photo editor, so they had them um, to be going. Um, uh, so they they, they, they they had one column and the picture spread across two pages. And since this is a very big book, it doesn't look too good. Because if they use a saddle stitch, for example, in a small book, it comes out well. But this one with stitching, with binding, you know, doesn't come. And maybe they could have moved the column to the other page and used the whole page for the photograph itself. And of course, that is my major criticism of it. Otherwise, it's a very nice book, very great documentation, because it's a very important, and I think Barry God is a very important man. Because as a black man, when blacks didn't have any opportunities, he started this record label. And a lot of blacks, they, I mean, it really sold black music to the whole world. And that's a very great thing. And we need people like that in Nigeria, as a matter of fact. Yeah, Doctor, I was about to ask, uh, I was about to ask if we could also have uh, a documentation like that in Nigeria. Yeah, yes, because it because probably... We have, we have so many labels. We have yes, Ivory, we have yes. uh, Polygram. Yes. Just name them. I wonder why it hasn't happened. Because, you know, like this era, the 70s, for example, and the 80s, all the artists, all they have to do is to put the pictures together and get a publisher. Right from they, the Adeolo, I think so, yeah. Yes, yeah, they should I'm surprised this doesn't exist. But this is why I would like, people will ask me, why don't you bring Nigerian books often? But I can't find them. <laughs> because you know, and they don't exist, and we need to do. Otherwise, you find that people will just forget. Because when Edio Konta died, you know, nobody, there were no photographs, nothing from those, I mean, the era, you know, and people would just forget about them. And and we, they, you just remember what they told you by word of mouth. And we desperately need this kind of thing. And I hope somebody will think about it, you know, somebody will sponsor it, because you know, that's what we do in this country. We need people to sponsor things. All right. And I think it will really be great when they do this. Okay. I want to thank you, sir, for coming on to the show. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, right. for the DBN Easter Family Fiesta, organized in conjunction with Latin Pine, did have a very, very good time. Our in-house correspondent, Cynthia Ejike, was there, and she came back with lots and lots of wonderful things. 
Good evening, sir. Good evening. And this is uh, 